Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this pistol that you see in my hands right here. This is the Glock 45 and as you'd expect it's a 9mm. Uh, one of the newer offerings from Glock at least as of this video anyway. And uh, before we go on too far I want to thank GT Distributors for sending this pistol out uh, for this review. Definitely appreciate that. But uh, what we're going to do today is just shoot a bunch of rounds through it. Go over kind of the design concept which I guess we can touch on right now. Uh, it has a Glock 19 length slide and barrel and then a 17 length uh, grip here. So when this was first released, uh, myself and many others kind of mocked it, um, being a mullet Glock. Uh, it's all business in the front and party in the back here on the grip. However, uh, after using it, a lot of us, um, again, myself included, were sort of forced to eat crow. It has some very good uh, shooting properties that uh, I like and other folks do as well, but we'll get into that. All those details, we'll compare it to a few other Glock offerings. We'll kind of touch on some of the unique things that this pistol has, and uh, at the end, we'll wrap it up with what we think of it overall. Now that the dogs have blessed off on it, we'll get into the details. We'll start down here at the bottom and kind of work our way up for some semblance of order. It does come with three 17 round Gen 5 mags. So uh, for those who don't know the Gen 5 mags, they have this little lip here in the front, which allows it to be stripped and ripped. Uh, should you get a double feed, get a little bit more purchase there than you would have without it. It also has that high visibility follower, which you guys can't see uh, because, of course, this mag is loaded. It has the ambi cuts there, uh, so that way you can swap the mag release. So the mag release comes on the left side of the pistol from the factory, but if you want, you can swap it out uh, to the right side for you left-handed folks out there. It's a very simple uh, fix. Basically, you just move a spring in the grip and uh, slide it over, and you're done. Our magwell here does have a very good bevel to it. Now, I'm going to bring in another gun here simply because it's going to come up if I don't. Um, the early Gen 5 guns, uh, like for instance, this 17 had this cutout here. And again, that was to aid in stripping and ripping the magazine. But one thing a lot of people found out was that it was pinching their hands. Um, so Glock, wisely in my opinion, did away with it. But you can see there is a nice swell around the bottom of the grip. And I actually kind of like it because it tends to force your hand if you have larger hands. Anyway, it forces your hand up on the grip, which is a good thing for control. Uh, we also have the little spot there if you want to put any accessories, magwells, etc. on there. I'm sure they're out for the Gen 5 guns, uh, so if you want to do that, you, you can do so. A lot of viewers asked if the uh, G45 would work with the Glock mags due to the way the base plate's designed. Uh, it does. I seated it on an empty chamber and then racked the slide already. Kind of forgot to hit record, but we'll see how it runs. Seems to function just fine. The grip on the pistol is going to be the same as a Gen 5 Glock 17, so it's going to have no finger grooves, which I know a lot of folks really like. Some folks don't like it uh, to each their own, I suppose. But texturing is going to be very similar to the Gen 4 Glocks with these little polymer uh, nubs raised up on there. It gives you a good purchase on the pistol. Um, it doesn't move around your hand too much, even if it's, you're out shooting in the, the heat and it's really hot, your hands are sweaty or bloody or whatever the case may be. Um, and it's not so aggressive that it's going to like rub off your, your clothes or your belt or anything like that, like some of the folks said happened with the RTF2 finish, which is a pretty aggressive finish. It's probably my favorite, though, in the history of the Glocks, but this one here would be my second favorite. It's good to go. I have no issues with it at all. You can see here on the right side of the pistol that we do have an ambidextrous slide lock and slide release. And as you can see on both sides of it, uh, it has a very quickly wearing finish. All of my Gen 5 Glocks have that. I have no idea what Glock is doing in terms of their finish. Are they just spray painting those or, or whatever? But either way, it wears very quickly, but function-wise, 
it sticks out a little bit further than like the Gen 4s would on both sides. Now one gun, my Glock 19, and I have no idea why no other uh, Gen 5 Glocks have had this experience for me, but on my Glock 19, I tend to accidentally hit it. Um, it's just something to keep in mind and be aware of uh, if you're out there shooting with it and you accidentally get a, you know, a slide lock when you shouldn't. That could be the reason why is that it is a little bit enlarged over the uh, standard, you know, Gen 4, Gen 1 through 4 rather, slide stop, slide release. On the back of the grip here, we do have the space to add uh, additional back straps should you choose to do so. It's going to have uh, two back straps that come with it, which are not going to have a beaver tail on there, and then two that come with it that do have a beaver tail. An example would be like we have here on this uh, Glock 17 Gen 5. This one has the medium size with the beaver tail on there. So folks have really, really large hands uh, who get slide bite with Glocks, it will help protect you in that case. Moving forward, we'll get into the trigger. It does have the Glock safe action trigger, meaning that it has the safety there right in the middle that has to be depressed if I just push on this trigger here, but don't depress that middle portion. There's no way for the gun to fire. That is one of the inherent built-in safeties that all Glock pistols have. A lot of guns certainly have copied that over the years. We'll just double check to make sure we're clear. We are. Now the trigger on this gun is very good. Uh, all Gen 5 triggers are very good in my opinion. Um, they're much better than the Gen 1 through 4s from the factory. And the reason is, it's not that they're lighter or anything, they actually break a little bit heavier on my scale, generally speaking, they break 5.5 to 6 pounds, but they give the shooter more input. And what I mean by that is that, let's walk through it. So when you actually start to pull the trigger here, there's a little bit more resistance and a little bit more, uh, I guess, weight on it than the earlier Glocks had. And then you pull it to a wall, and the wall here is definitely easier to tell, um, in my opinion than the Gen 1 through 4. Not that it was hard on those, but this one definitely lets you know when you're there. It has a little bit of creep to it, and then it has a nice crisp break. Now I say crisp break, I mean crisp for a factory Glock trigger. So compared to like the Gen 1 through 4s, uh, if you compare it to like a Salient Arms or something like that trigger, it's definitely not crisp. The reset though, very tactile, very audible, and it's nice and short there as you can see. And then again, we have a little bit of mush, and then that break right there at the back, there's no over travel or anything like that with the trigger pull. So I definitely like the Gen 5 trigger. Uh, I think it's an improvement in pretty much every way from the shooter's perspective. We'll show you some of the internal parts there in just a second. Moving forward, we do have the standard Glock rail on there. So any of your lights, lasers, accessories that fit the Glock rail will fit on this one as well. One thing I know a lot of folks were excited about with this pistol was the forward serrations that you see here on the slide. I don't really get worked up about it either way. I don't have a problem with it, but I think it's nice that they're there. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. Um, the slide itself is finished in a DLC finish. Now, some folks have said that this is the greatest finish ever. Some folks have said it's not so great. Glock says it's harder and more corrosion resistant than any finish they've used before, so including the uh, Gen three in the Gen 4. I know a lot of folks really like that uh, Gen 3 finish. Um, Glock says this one's better. I have no reason to doubt them on that. It's held up pretty darn well. Maybe they should apply it on the slide stop. <laughs> That's just my two cents anyway. Uh, the same serrations there on the rear that we have up front. There's no difference in terms of how they feel or anything like that. Uh, our barrel is Glock's Marksman barrel. So a few things about that. They say it's much more accurate than the uh, Gen 1 through Gen 4. I find that to be the case. Uh, if you guys watch my 19X video, I do shoot that one for groups and it shot really very well. So two inch groups at 25 yards from a service pistol, I'll take that all day long. It does have a recessed crown, which is nice. So that way, if you have any sort of damage to your barrel, um, say in law enforcement military type use, uh, it's less likely to impact your actual accuracy that you see when you are firing the gun. Now the barrel itself is cold hammer forged. It's got uh, new improved polygonal rifling. Uh, it's hard to say what they really did. It'll show you, we'll roll in a photo of it here. And I've looked online on all their different ads and uh, earlier when the Gen 5s first came out, they said it wasn't polygonal and now they say it is, so it's an improved polygonal is what they're calling it. Either way, uh, what I'll tell you is that it shoots great. I've had zero issues in terms of accuracy at all out of this pistol, so nothing to complain about there. Uh, the sights that come on it are going to be a polymer from the factory. That's the base model. And then they do offer a night sight version, which is going to have the Amerigo agent sights on there. This one came uh, with the polymer sights and then Amerigo sent me their agent sights. Now, one thing to point out is that the sights on a Gen 5 Glock are a different height than a Gen 4. So if you're going to get any sort of aftermarket sights for it, 
I definitely recommend you check that first. So that way you can ensure that your point of impact and point of aim will be correct. But these Amerigold agents are awesome. We have this subdued uh, tritium there in the rear with the serrations. It's got a U-notch and a bright orange ring out there on the front to draw your eye into it. And uh, three tritium vials in total. All in all, really like the sights. Disassembly of the pistol is just like any other Glock pistol out there. You're going to pull up, or rather push up there in your slide lock, inspect the chamber, make sure there's nothing in there, no mag. Let the slide go home at this point. Pull, point rather, in a safe direction. Pull the trigger. Pull back about an eighth of an inch there on the slide. We're going to pull down our little tabs here on both sides. Release, and the slide will come off. We do have a, a dual recoil spring that uh, all of the Gen 5s have. And again, here's our marksman barrel. That you guys can see uh, just talking about wear with that DLC type of finish you guys can see the wear on there this pistol right now has just over 1200 rounds through it so normal wear in my opinion nothing too crazy to get worked up over same thing here in the slide uh, one thing to point out is it has the uh, the striker safety there which was first found I believe on the Glock 42s and then continued to the 43 and uh, now on to the gen 5 system so instead of having that round one like the you know the earlier generations had this one here is kind of stepped along the way with like three different steps. And I think that helps contribute to the uh, consistent trigger pull that you get. And uh, one other thing that's definitely going to contribute to that is the redesign of the trigger spring back here. It's uh, very similar if you look at the design on the Gen 5 triggers to the um, New York pistol or NYPD. Uh, trigger spring that they used to have uh, for the New York police officers. What that did, for those who don't know, is it made the triggers heavier because, of course, in true bureaucratic fashion, uh, the New York Police Department wanted to make it more difficult for their officers to pull their triggers. But either way, um, what it does here is it gives you more consistent feedback. You guys can see the change here with the slide stop and slide lock levers that we have. But all in all, pretty much looks like a Glock. I know there's a lot of you watching this that are saying, which one should I get? Should I get the 19X or should I get the 45? Because both of them are similar in terms of the 19 length slide and the 17 length frame. Now, my answer to that is, I don't know, get whichever one you find cooler. However, some of the differences for those that don't know is the 19X has this little hub, or rather bump out here in the front. What that does is it prevents you from using Gen 5 17 round magazines. However, all other Glock magazines will work in the 19X for those that don't know. And that is why that enhanced lip there out on the front will not seat on a 19X. Just something to point out there. Um, whereas uh, the 19X, again, will take any other mags besides that one Gen 5 17 round mag. It comes with, uh, of course, two 19 round mags and a 17 rounder has the... Um, little lanyard there if you want to have a lanyard for whatever reason that might actually happen. Uh, it also comes with night sights. Of course, we have a very different finish on there. And uh, this 19X has got a bunch of rounds through it. You can see it's wearing pretty well. There's not a lot of issues there. Again, the uh, slide stop slide release is wearing uh, quickly. Um, the 19X has maritime spring cups. Uh, the 45 doesn't. Um, so if you're planning on LARPing, um, using your 19X by a river or something like that, or invading a country through maritime operations, maybe the 19X might be something to look at. I'll probably do a full video on uh, the comparisons between the two, but those are kind of the big ones, and of course, no forward serrations. So uh, just, again, to clarify, both of them have the exact same length slide, the exact same length uh, grip, just those differences out there on the ends. And again, the same thing is true here. If you take a look here at the Glock 17 Gen 5, Grips the same, just a little bit shorter there in the slide. And one thing to think about with that, guys, that a lot of people are concerned with is that they're going to lose velocity with their ammo. And to some extent, that's true. Um, most of your defensive loads, you're going to lose about 50 to 75 feet per second, again, depending on the load, the weight, and all that stuff. Um, however, what you gain is that uh, lighter slide recoiling each time you pull the trigger. So again, here's our Gen 5 Glock 19. You can see the slide is the exact same length, but the grip there sticks out just a little bit further. One subset of the market that I know was very happy to see this release versus the uh, 19X was the law enforcement uh, community. Many departments just don't allow their officers to carry a TAN or FDE gun. And this, of course, is going to give you very similar performance. However, it's not TAN or FDE, so it was kind of a win for them. Um, a lot of things we talked about, don't really care much about the front serrations, but I know it's a huge deal for a lot of folks if that's you. Cool. Um, I love the shooting uh, feedback and feel that you get from it, both from the trigger that we talked about as well 
well as the way the sights track with that uh, lighter weight slide, uh, less mass reciprocating and the full grip that you get on there, it definitely tracks very, very well. So um, I do enjoy it. This one here is probably gonna be going in my carry rotation. And let's talk about that. Um, myself, I tend to carry at the three or four o'clock position. So concealing the grip is a legitimate concern for me because that's the biggest part that's gonna print for me. However, I know a lot of folks these days are appendix carrying. So if you're appendix carrying, this kind of is an ideal setup for you. The reason is if you have it on your body like this, or I guess for left-handers, it's the same way. Uh, the part that you're concerned about is not the grip because it doesn't really print when you're carrying appendix. However, when you're sitting down carrying appendix, the barrel tends to poke you a bit. Uh, so if that's the case, having that shorter barrel is a good thing. And I think in 2019, a lot of folks are carrying that way. Again, I'm really not. Uh, this one here will be going in my uh, uh, crossbreed uh, rig that I carry three or four o'clock position. Um, and I just have to be mindful of what I'm wearing in terms of uh, concealment. But all in all, I mean, I think it's a great gun. Uh, price point wise, it's not a ton of money. Uh, these come in around 550 to 570-ish with uh, no night sights. With the night sights, you can tack another 60 or $70 on there. Um, I think it's kind of absurd. Again, the Glock includes plastic sights with them, but hey, some folks think they're fine. I, I don't, I think it's kind of an embarrassment, especially with uh, a lot of the good competitors that are out there now, the MNPs, the CZ, the FN 509, uh, the SIG P320, etc. Uh, there's a lot of good pistols out there in the Palmer 9mm duty uh, category, I guess. And uh, Glock's kind of on the higher end of that price point. Of course, it's not super expensive, but it's something to take into account for sure. Uh, another thing to take into account is that there's tons of aftermarket support for these. Uh, Gen 5 Glocks have been out for a while now, and uh, if you want different triggers, sights, barrels, magwell whatever it's out there you can drop it in uh, pretty easily with the glocks so pros and cons to it uh, performance wise we've had zero mile functions i mentioned earlier just over 1200 rounds so you absolutely can't complain about that it's eaten just about everything we've fed it the majority of it has been 125 grain uh, minuteman munitions they're blue coat stuff um, but it's eaten hsts gold dots etc without complaints so yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can post over at my Facebook page as well. That's generally speaking the best place to get in touch with me if you actually need those questions answered because I see the messages over there. Whereas on YouTube or Full30, um, I just don't see them. I don't get the notifications like I do over there on Facebook. You guys can also sign up for my email list over there on Facebook or you can do it at my website if you choose to do so. I send out a weekly email with some best deals of the week and then also uh, the videos that we have released that week as well in there but that's pretty much it guys if you're new to the channel and aren't subscribed please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and thank you all for watching i appreciate it and hope to see all of you in the next video